In an early episode of my favorite TV series, The Night Of, Nasir Khan, a thin college student, enters Rikers Island, the most notorious prison in New York. As another inmate reveals to him, this doe-eyed boy has entered the land of wolves and has very little time to adapt. The inmate tells him, look people in the eye, but don't look him in the eye and put some muscle on you. You have to let people know that they can't mess around with you. And so Nasir Khan starts working out. He gets some like tough looking tattoos. He shaves his head. His walk over the course of the series becomes so much more dominant. It's an incredible transformation to witness from like, a scared college student to someone who's very intimidating. And it's one of the reasons why I've enjoyed the show so much. Of course, in real life, it's a situation that no one would want to find themselves in. But as an onlooker, one thing that we always notice is that many prisoners are extremely jacked. How does this happen? It's not like prisons have LA fitnesses inside them. They don't have kitchens that'll ensure that you'll hit your macros. You know, that traditional advice of getting one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Many prisoners exercise way more than what conventional wisdom would suggest. They don't take rest days. So how does this happen? I came up with five hypothetical reasons as to why prisoners get so jacked and muscular. And the cool thing about these is that they're all transferable to our own lives. The first reason is that prisoners have a strong why. Just like how Nasir Khan became a target when he entered Rikers or Andy Dufresne at Shawshank prison, the weak in prison become targets. In Nasir's early days inside, another inmate simply takes his commissary card and just buys whatever he wants with it. And as he's going about his business, he gets like aggressive, dirty looks from the other inmates. And that's when his friend Bashi tells him that Nasir's gotta toughen himself up by building up his body because otherwise he is going to get bullied or worse. Many people struggle with getting in the gym in the first place. New Year's is around the corner and you'll see all the resolutioners hijacking all of the machines at the gym. Fucking New Year's, right? It's ridiculous, man. But quickly they leave. And this is because their motivation, their reason why, isn't emotionally strong enough. It's not established. But in prison, getting big and strong is a necessity. And if your survival depends on your strength, your motivation is gonna be sky high. So for our own part, if we wanna make progress with strength, we have to come up with as compelling of a reason as to why we wanna get strong. Reason number two, and this is just a conjecture, but maybe prisoners have higher testosterone. It's possible that an inmate would have more testosterone than your average male in a non-threatening life situation. There's not a lot of great evidence linking testosterone with criminal behavior, but an essay by Robert Sapolsky cited that while testosterone might not increase violent behavior itself, what it might do is exacerbate previously existing violent tendencies. Want to start some stuff? Huh? I'm more of a finisher. And of course, testosterone increases muscle mass by increasing muscle protein synthesis. Now, there's not a lot of evidence saying that we can naturally increase our testosterone levels, even though there's been a lot of videos on YouTube saying that you can increase your testosterone. I think testosterone is largely set by your genetics, but what you can do is make sure you're not artificially lowering your testosterone through a poor lifestyle. This includes things like eating the right foods, especially making sure you have a lot of healthy fats in your diet, getting enough sleep, and lowering your stress. Unlike prisoners who don't get to track their macronutrients, I've been trying to stay more on top of this. This is what meals look like for me these days. This is some Beyond Beef fake meat, uh, pea protein based meat. I've also been trying to be more on top of my micronutrients, so I'll eat something like kale and blueberries. Despite these things, I don't think I hit all of my micronutrients, especially because some days are so busy. So a big part of how I meet my nutritional needs and my nutritional goals is this stuff. Athletic Greens, which is the sponsor for today's video. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a comprehensive all-in-one greens powder engineered to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet. It's packed with 75 vitamins and minerals and whole food sourced ingredients, combining the perfect amount of micronutrients, absorption, and taste to jumpstart your daily routine. Also as part of my supplement stack is their vitamin D3 plus K2. One thing that I definitely noticed from Athletic Greens is that my skin looks better. I generally speaking feel more confident in terms of my performance on Athletic Greens just because all those micronutrients that I can't necessarily get, it's kind of time consuming to cook up a bunch of fruits and vegetables every day. So this is like my insurance policy. To get a one year supply of vitamin D plus five individual travel packs free with your first purchase, go to athleticgreens.com slash Captain Sinbad. I'm so thrilled to be like an ambassador for their product because it truly is world class. It's fantastic. Idea number three is that prisoners get a consistent diet. Now, 
Prison food is notoriously low quality. Meals might consist of cold cereal, canned fruit, biscuits, like a generic gravy. This is standard fare. It's not necessarily bad food, but it's not what you would think of when you think of like a high protein, really healthy, nutritious diet. They're not getting access to like a lot of healthy fruits and vegetables. It's not super high quality food. And in fact, over the years, over the history of prison, there have been numerous investigations on like nutritional deficiencies in prison inmates, but the meals are at regular times, two to three meals per day. And with regular exercise, it's possible that what a lot of prisoners are going through isn't just muscle building, but maybe they're just leaning out because they don't really have an opportunity to binge eat. I mean, prison food has the occasional dessert, like a brownie, but it's not gonna be like super delicious Ben and Jerry's ice cream. You can't just on a whim destroy your diet, grab takeout, McDonald's, what have you. The meals are consistent, two to three meals per day, but also don't really allow for an opportunity to just fatten yourself up. And in terms of aesthetics, building muscle is super hard to do, but a great way to just look stronger and have a more impressive physique is just to lean out. It'll sort of display the muscle you already have far more readily. Idea number four, prisoners will work out often. Sometimes they'll work out just to deal with the boredom. Prison life, it exists on a set schedule and every day for the most part looks the same. So many prisoners are left with an abundance of time and nothing to do except work out and read. In fact, one of my favorite books of all time, The Autobiography of Malcolm X, it's all Malcolm X ever did. When he first entered prison, he would just pace around his cell and then he got into reading because that's all there was to do. So it actually became a very nurturing phase of his life. And often inmates will work out two or even three times per day every single day without fail, just to stay sane. And if there's any key to building muscle, it is that consistent effort in working out. Imagine serving a five-year sentence and working out every single day, two to three times per day. Of course, there's fear of overtraining, but as our boy Goggins would say, you've got to train before you overtrain. You got to train first before you can overtrain. There's no way you wouldn't get stronger. Beyond that, as I've said, many inmates don't have access to like compound lifts, so they just do a ton of body weight exercises and this gives them so much conditioning that they lean out and they look stronger just because they get so lean. And the last idea is that they get enough sleep. Questions. Do you leave the light on after bedtime? In terms of building muscle and mass, recovery can be glazed over, but it's often the most important part of the process. No matter how much you work out or eat, if you're not getting enough sleep, you're fucked. In prison, there are no distractions to sleep. You can't stay up staring at your cell phone or tablet because the correctional officer would come in and beat the shit out of you. There's an enormous amount of evidence linking sleep with muscle growth. It's almost a joke that I'm even bringing studies into this to talk about this, but there have been numerous studies pointing out that building up a sleep debt will decrease the activity of protein synthesis pathways and increase the activity of degradation pathways, favoring the loss of muscle mass and thus hindering muscle recovery after damage is induced by exercise. The great thing about all of these points is that they're transferable to our own lives. Prison, in a way, puts a certain amount of discipline on its inmates, and that becomes a blessing in disguise. I'm not saying prison as a whole is a blessing, but that discipline is very useful. Now we have the opportunity to put that discipline into our own lives. And in fact, some of the freedoms that we are afforded, such as the fact that we can stay up as late as we want, we can scroll our phones all day, it sort of becomes a hindrance to progress. But we have an opportunity to put that discipline on ourselves, to be consistent, to sleep regularly, to make sure that our testosterone levels are healthy through good lifestyle, and by honoring the routines that we set for ourselves. If you're new to this channel and you like this video, my name is Nikhil, and I'd love it if you subscribed. But with that being said, for those of us who stay consistent, get enough sleep, get in the gym, do those reps, to us I say, greatness is coming.